warm welcome to all the participants for joining a day two Oracle Fusion demo offered by Triotech Software Trainings. I am your SCM trainer, Sujit Kumar. Let me give a brief introduction. I have 13 plus years of experience in ERP working across both on-premise and Fusion implementations. And I have been working on multi-language projects and also multi-region across the globe. Okay. Earlier, I started with JD Edwards, then moved on to on-premise Oracle eBusiness Suit. And currently, I'm working on Fusion Cloud projects as a supply chain management consultant. Okay. Now, I'm not sure how many people from today's uh, participant and also attended yesterday's first day of demo session. So just to, I will take five minutes, initial five minutes to brief you what was covered yesterday. Just a minute. Just hold on for a second. I'll be back. So first five minutes, I will just take a quick overview what was covered as part of day one fusion demo. So we started our demo one, day one session yesterday. So this was the agenda we had included. Introduction to ERP, how the Oracle fusion applications evolved over the years. What is actually fusion application? What is the difference between on-premise and cloud? And what are the different releases and where we are in the current release and about the fusion architecture and the deployment options and also we covered what are the modules we are going to cover as part of our course so these two what are the modules we cover and what are the advantages of joining triotech software trainings we will cover again at the end of this session just to quickly go Today's session, we'll just focus on this about procurement. Since we are talking about supply chain management, we will be discussing about procurement family and within supply chain management, order management and the inventory management. Okay. But today is also going to be an eye level. First, we need to understand who are the parties who are involved and what actually happens when a company wants to purchase and implement fusion okay so let me go back and give a clear picture what will happen when a company is trying to buy oracle fusion and implement it just we will assume that there is a company named abc corporation the company is called abc corporation Okay. Who are into procurement business? And we say procurement business, they are into purchasing goods or services. We say procurement. Procure is nothing but to purchase goods or services. Okay. Now, with this understanding, assume that ABC Corporation has gone through the markets and they have chosen Oracle Fusion. And they have seen Oracle Fusion and they have decided to buy Oracle Fusion to implement for their business. Okay, so this is the company. Now, in this scenario, 
what will happen is there will be multiple parties involved okay who are the parties who will be involved one is the company which is going to buy oracle fusion in our case it's abc corp we can say that this is the company who is purchasing fusion okay and they want to implement it purchasing fusion oracle fusion now from whom they will buy there should be a vendor there should be a vendor now when we talk about oracle fusion the vendor is oracle because oracle is owning the oracle fusion okay multiple parties are one is the buying company okay i am just putting here a buying company and another is a vendor apart from these two there will be a third party involved who will be called as the implementation company or implementing party implementing company who are the implementing company now abc corp has paid the subscription and brought the or bought the oracle fusion saas application there should be a company to implement when we say implement it can be an implementing company like tcs wipro hcl etc what they will do is they will study the system the current system and they will try to match what are the requirement and then configure so the implementing company is nothing but they will be configuring the oracle fusion application for abc corporation okay so this is how it works now why they went for this oracle fusion as we are seeing in this slide that particular Excuse abc me, corporation is working on a module of purchasing procure procure to pay so in that case they will be making use of the procurement module like purchasing self service procurement sourcing etc based on the requirement and when we say procure to pay finally they will also be creating the invoices and payments that comes under financial management so the product family which we are going to take as an example for abc corporation is a procurement and purchasing module with this understanding we will go here so once they purchase the fusion in general what is meant by purchasing we will take an example of laptops okay assume that this company is going to buy laptop from suppliers so we know that whenever we are into purchasing we will not directly go and purchase something from a supplier right so there will be some steps this buying company has to first ask for a quote the buying company there are some steps before purchasing laptop the buying company will ask for a quote which is nothing but request for quote okay rfq or it is also called as negotiation once they do this they will be negotiating with the supplier right you are see many item maybe it can be a, a mobile phone a laptop or any other goods they have to negotiate to get the best price right once they negotiate they will go into an agreement with the supplier to provide the goods or services next what is the logical step they have asked for a quote supplier has given the quote 
this abc company or oh sorry this abc corporation company has negotiated let us assume that supplier is supplier of laptop is someone in the market for example samsung okay or dell we will take the example of dell so abc corp will be asking for a quote from dell there will be multiple suppliers maybe another one supplier will take as toshiba okay suppliers of laptop so they have to go through this process abc corp has to contact suppliers ask for quote then negotiate then agree and then they have to release a purchase order once all this is done they have to release a po fine and then once all these are happening finally they have to receive the laptops now in this case if we see if we try to match with oracle fusion why we need so many products within the product family now this particular thing asking for quote or quotation or to negotiate this comes under this negotiation and quotation is coming under sourcing oracle fusion sourcing okay in short it is called as pon pon is a short code which refers to oracle fusion sourcing okay now assume that there is another step some of the companies will also before leasing the po will go for a requisition okay once they uh, get all this they will go for a requisition sorry to stop you here uh, what is yes. po uh, what is po what is po here p1 is a short code is a oracle internal code for the sourcing module okay Mm -hmm. whenever we speak oracle fusion terminal some people will say that we are working on pon pon is nothing but sourcing okay like Man, we have some we internal codes can we say yes. application name kind of stuff yes it's an application code it's an application code okay one more question uh, so when we, when we say requisition so before prior to that uh, we have to have uh, suppliers configured in our system Or... Yes, yes. I'm just going to come uh, to okay. all those things. Yes. Okay. Yes, we need to come. Uh, I will just go through this, just in order to continue the this one. What we will do is we will take the questions at the end, so that we have some continuity. I will just finish everything. In case once I finish this, if you have queries, then we will start answering your queries. Thank you for your understanding. Okay. So this is the usual process we follow. So. i'm just putting this these two are coming under sourcing okay next agreement requisition is there in fact i will just take this requisition to the top because requisition is request for goods i'll remove from here okay now requisition is coming under ssp module oracle fusion self service procurement this is called as ssp ssp stands for self service procurement now agreement purchase orders are coming under purchasing module we call it as pur oracle fusion purchasing okay and receiving receiving of the items comes under oracle inventory management okay now this is the flow but when we work on the fusion system in order to do all this first the supplier should be part of the flow correct so supply should be created now the supplier creation is already taken care in the oracle fusion purchasing module okay supplier creation is already taken care of oracle fusion purchasing module okay now there is another module 
which is called as oracle fusion supplier port this is called as pos okay now why we need this fusion see again this is optional when we are dealing in a project where supplier is online supplier then we need this model or a confusion supplier port suppliers can be of two types online and offline okay now when it is online supplier is going to access supplier port okay why they have to access to acknowledge document or it can be even for approvals okay now in case if the supplier is an offline supplier means there is no access they don't need access to supplier port in that case what will happen this company the buying company they will have their own users right they have their own departments the abc corp Will have their own departments like inventory department or it can be called as resuming department a purchasing department okay now in this case when we say purchasing department buyers will be there who are the buyers the buyers or the people within the abc corporation who will be negotiating with the supplier to buy the material so they are the people who will be involved in the purchase order and agreements those are the people who are called buyers okay buyers are from purchasing department now in case of offline supplier what will happen since supplier does not have access to supplier portal they will do a communication with the buyer through email or fax now fax is outdated so they will use other mode of communication like email or they can have a conversation on the phone to negotiate with the buyer from the abc corp the main point to understand is we have highlighted multiple modules here now this is based on the requirement of the abc corp they will subscribe for any or a multiple or a combination of these modules based on the requirement okay suppose this abc corp is not involved in any selling that means they don't need to go for order management you see there is something like in supply chain management we have order management which is involves order orchestration and global order processing so in case if this company is not selling they are only buying for their own use that means they will be only choosing and subscribing for specific fusion modules okay now why oracle fusion is giving so many modules because based on the operations or the inos business what they are going to do based on that they have to choose the and pay for the modules as we see a negotiation and wow. quotation is coming under fusion sourcing if requisition is involved requisition is nothing but requesters will be requesting for goods like how we have buyer we have requesting department requesting department in requesting department people who are creating these requisitions are called as requesters so they will be involved in creating the requisitions so i will just put the order like this so this is the basic functionality of an erp whenever we acquire or whenever we want to purchase or whenever we want to procure an item from a supplier or goods from supplier we have to go through this process okay only thing is there might be a slight variation in some companies they might always want to start with requisition there should not be any stand alone purchase order in that case what will happen they will create always requisition as a first step request for goods 
on services. Okay. Sir, requisition comes in case of offline or how is it like? Uh, sorry, can you repeat your question? A requisition comes in case of offline or it no, no, comes no. In self See, requisition will be there for all the suppliers. Now, when I say online and offline, important thing is all these suppliers should be created in Oracle Fusion. Just assume that in this example, I am taking online suppliers. Two suppliers I will just take. I'm just taking TAS back as one of the online supplier. Okay. Unmark below as another online supplier. And we have some offline suppliers. Okay. Offline suppliers. Arvind else. Just I'm just taking some random. Okay. And I have another supplier called Kim. Okay, now what is the meaning of this is any supplier, be it online or offline. Okay, all this should be first created as a supplier in the system. So when we have Oracle Fusion, when this ABC Corp has subscribed to Oracle Fusion purchasing, there will be a separate place to create the suppliers. So this is just a understanding. Now we'll just see in the system how it happens okay so that we get clarity now let me go into the system to give some clarity on this before this one more important point we need to understand once abc corp had purchased oracle fusion from vendor oracle they will be provided a link they will be provided a link okay so let me open a link. Let me assume that they have been given a link. So this is the first step. The ABC Corp has been provisioned with a link. So let us see. Now we are going to see what happens on the next steps. They have been provided a link. Okay. Now, when we log into this, and they will be provided a credential. Now, before going to system, there is another important thing. We were discussing that there is also another party, implementing company. Okay. So, that means whenever we log into a Fusion application, okay, Fusion application for ABC Corp, assume that they have received this link. They have received this Fusion URL link. Now, what will happen is there are, will be two different kind of uses which will be created in the system. One is implementation users, and another is business users. Business users. Okay. Now, what are those implementation users? Implementation users are the consultants coming from any of this company who will be configuring the system for ABC Core. Now, whenever we talk about users, that means we will also involve Oracle HCM, Human Capital Management. Correct? So, we will also involve Oracle HCM, Human Capital Management. See, that can be on a full cycle or full license module or it can be a shared module. Okay. Assume that they have Oracle HCM module. That means they have to create the users and the payroll in the system. Now, for implementation users, they will be created with a generic user. We'll see this in few minutes in the system. Suppose we are implementing procurement there will be a generic procurement implementation user created and for hcm it will be hcm underscore impl underscore user in case if this company had also subscribed for financial module then there will be another user called financial implementation user 
Now, these are all generic users who are created in the system and will be used only by implementing company to configure. Now, what are those business users? Initially, business users will not be created because these users will configure the system. And later, when we release the system, Fusion to ABC Corp employees, these business users are nothing but employees of employees or it can be a contractors also employees or contractors of abc corp okay now for this they will have their own users like i'm just putting some name like kumar anil okay akshay they belong to different departments maybe kumar is from inventory department okay i'm just putting short form inventory the short form which i used here okay and assume that there is another person okay sujit sujit is from purchasing department pur similarly anil is from hcm Akshay is from financial. Okay. Now, what will happen? These are all business users. Implementation user will create this setup configuration and there will be business users. So, this business users also should be registered in the system. But if we see clearly, this business user, Kumar, is going to involve only in inventory module, whereas Sujit is going to involve only in purchase order. Purchase order. And we can say that self-service procurement and sourcing. Okay. Whereas Anil is involved only in HCM. Akshay is only involved in financial. In that case, all these users will also be created in the system. Need to be registered in the system as an employee. Okay. But how we differentiate which user is going to perform which task? If we take this example of requisition, SSP, quotation and negotiation coming from sourcing, agreement and purchase are from purchasing. How we can differentiate and give specific access? That is possible by making use of roles and responsibilities. We have something called roles and responsibilities. Okay, so now system is provided seeded roles. Oracle Fusion provides seeded role. Okay, why we have seeded roles? Just to have secure to secure users based on the module or the task or the work they are going to perform okay for example we were discussing that in a purchasing department there will be a buyer i'm just taking this example we will again see all this in the system there is this purchasing department a buyer and we have given sujit as the user Suppose Sujit is the buyer from purchasing department. In that case, Sujit will be given an role of employee from multiple users. Sujit will have any user, a business user who has to perform transaction and belong to ABC Corp should be registered as an employee. So once registered as an employee, will be given the role of an employee plus additional roles. If Sujit is involved in purchasing SSP sourcing, so there will be multiple roles as a buyer. Okay, there is a role called buyer and there is a role for requisition, to create requisition or to prepare requisition. We have a role called procurement preparer. Okay, 
the role gives the user access to create requisitions there are multiple other roles i'm just giving a small example now if sujit has to do a creation of requisition should be given this role if this person has to create purchase order or agreement should be given this buyer and should be also defined as an employee okay this is an example so how we are segregating now if we take this example of kumar who is coming from inventory module kumar is from inventory department Kumar is a person who is an employee of ABC Corp, but belongs to inventory department. That means Kumar will be involved in the receipt of goods. So Kumar will be given an employee role. Plus, additionally, there is something called receiving agent, seeded role, will be given this. Apart from this, there are other roles to do inventory. For example, if you have to create items i need to mention one more module we have oracle product information management okay or oracle product management this is required to create and maintain items create and maintain items okay now if kumar is also involved in the creation and maintenance of items will be given product data steve there is another role which will be given so this is how oracle fusion segregates the duty of a user based on the different roles given to the oh. user now actually uh, if you see yes. uh, uh, earlier okay we have uh, requested for some of the items using supplier portal right so here when you say creation and uh, maintenance of item what does that mean means i didn't get this actually okay i'm just taking an example of laptop okay, okay. laptop yeah. is coming uh, with a different configuration right right now how when we go to a shop i'm just going to a dealer i'm going to buy a laptop mm. once we purchase a laptop we will be given the invoice correct in right. the invoice what is mentioned there will be a serial number mm. correct assume that this right. is a serial number there will be a particulars right or a description of the item which mm. we have brought mm. or we have bought description or particulars simply it will say if i have brought hp or samsung it will say the model and then it will also give additional configuration what is my laptop it says i7 or the processor or amd okay and what is my hard disk whether it is 256 gb correct mm -hmm. hdd some particulars will be there i say sd mm -hmm. correct and how much memory is it 8 gb or 16 gb or 32 gb correct right now how will i identify in my system i need to create an item correct there should be an item created in the system then i will use that item in the requisition so when we say item this is nothing that the same thing we are translating and creating a code in the system when i say item it's nothing but a, we define an item code in the system this item code for example for this configuration i might have item code which says 10001 okay mm -hmm. this is an item code which refers to this particular item samsung with this specification assume that I'm not sure who is uh, uh, using this. May know who is someone who is doing this annotation. Sorry. 
I'm just seeing someone is uh, scribbling on this. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, fine. So this is an item code. Assume that there is another laptop with a different configuration. For that, it belongs to Samsung. So there will be a different item code in system, which might start with one, okay? And it might have, instead of this, it might have different code, two, three. So that will have a different specification. We need to know which item we are dealing with. See, this description is gets printed, but for internally, in Fusion, we need to know, right? So we will add an item. We will just see that in the system right now. This is a basic understanding I have given. Now let us log into the system, okay? Just we will log into the system to get the look and feel. Now, this is how our URL is. Now, what is the meaning of this URL? Okay. What is the meaning of this URL? That also we need to understand. This is a demo URL. So, if I talk about the URL, this is a demo URL. FA stands for Fusion Application. Okay. FA stands for Fusion Application. Okay. And you see, after the fusion application, there is a four digit code ESLL. Okay. This is specific or unique to client who had purchased, who had purchased fusion. Now, in our case, ABC Corp. Now, ABC Corp might be given ESSL, ESLL, okay, or they may be given another four digit code. Next comes if it is a demo, it shows demo word, and then you see something like DS, DS stands for data center, okay, data center from where it is available. I will just take another example. Okay, I will take another example of an instance. Okay, I'll just take another example of an instance. So in real time, if it is not a demo instance, okay, it will be like this. Assume that we are working with a company who has purchased Fusion subscription from Oracle vendor, okay, from vendor Oracle. They have provided this link. Now, if you see the first four digit, this is not a demo instance, so that's why we are having this. The first four digits, H. PH. Let us call this uh, company as XYZ who had purchased Fusion. Okay. Now for XYZ, they are given EHBH is the unique identifier. And next four or five digits or five characters are going to give which environment? First is an identifier. Identifier. Next is an environment. Which environment we are working? In this example, it's test. Okay. Next is FA. FA stands for Fusion Application. Next, you see EU2. There is something called EU2. Next comes, it's a data center where the data center is located. In this case, it says it's located in EU2. Okay. Now, we also need to understand important thing. Whenever this company, ABC Corp, has purchased a fusion, they would also have purchased multiple environments because first we need to have a development instance, multiple instances. Okay, now not to confuse, I'll change this to ABC Corp. They would have purchased multiple instances. One is a development instance, another is a test instance, 
and they might have other instances including production okay i'm just giving the real practical thing what will happen so in development instance initially the implementation team will configure and some development will happen like report creation or whatever the business is asking based on the current operation okay once the development instance is configured initial testing will be done by the implementation team okay and then we were discussing about business uses right initially all the business users will not be involved there will be key users so in development instance key users from business i say abc corp will be involved okay just to see whatever is configured is working as per the expectation okay once that is done mostly in development instance we will not see real data okay when i say real data we were discussing about suppliers right suppliers employees etc usually in development instance it will be a, a subset of the data we will not have all the data or it can be a fictitious data okay it will not be a real time data it can be a fictitious data fictitious data means and i mean fictitious data it includes some dummy suppliers okay some dummy users it may not be real time suppliers real time users okay these are called master state okay now once this is done once the testing is done some of the key users from abc corp found that this is fine then we will get another instance where the implementation team will configure implementation team from tcs vipro hcl will again configure another instance so if i take this example test instance will have this wording but development instance instead of test it will have dev okay this is a basic understanding we need to have because when we go into projects we will be working on multiple instances they will be having test instance now in test instance usually all the queue users from this company will work all queue users all users in fact who are involved in day to day operation day to day operation will get involved okay so that means the data will be a real data real data means real users real suppliers will be loaded in the test instance okay this is a basic understanding with this we will now go into the system so assume that abc corp has been provided an url okay so i will just again show how the first page will be for this url to work depending on whether it's public or private some companies some of the instances they will make it accessible for example here development test production some of the instances as per abc corporation request might be public okay public means just if you have the link anyone can log in with the correct credentials okay this might be public okay but usually production will be private private means the moment i put this i will not get the url for example if i take the same example copy and then paste it here okay here it will say this or it will say that cannot be reached that means meaning of this is abc corp does not want a production instance or other instance to be given to public use there will be a security behind that a vpn connection virtual private network so we might have to additionally use some vpn to connect then we need to access the instance now let us just concentrate on this assume that this is an dev instance this is a demo that's why we are seeing this dev instance we got the user we just log in 
what is the first step the implementation team has to do as per this abc corp has subscribed to some of the modules not all the modules so the first step the implementation user will do is once logged in they have to enable the offerings we have something called offerings if i go to setup and maintenance i'm just going to give you overall things what will happen in real time okay what will be done by implementation okay they have to enable the offering but before that there is one more step i was saying that user should be created in the system to know the users we have a task called manage users just go to setup and maintenance as of now don't focus on the navigation we will give detailed explanation how to navigate now just focus on the high level what will happen we have something called manage users task if i click on manage users I'm just taking the example of HCM. Okay, this is the see the login user which we used is a display name. We used HCM.jan, but I don't know what is the uh, username associated with it. Okay, so usually what we will do is we come to this place, click on plus a user will be registered in the system whether it's an implementation user or a business user we have to register an user in this place by giving the last name first name what is the email id when the person was hired we will be giving. and then what you see your username this username is nothing but the login name like now we used hcm.gen this will be the login name okay but the display name first name last name might be something different so this is the place where the user is created assume that once we have the user the implementation person has logged into the system okay the next step is the implementation person will go to setup and maintenance right hand side we have actions we need to go to offerings this is important you see lot of offerings are since this is a demo instance you may see multiple modules many modules enabled it. now if abc corporation if we take the example they have got the payment or they have subscribed to the fusion module of purchasing supplier portal etc you see then we have to go to procurement procurement click on procurement we have something called opt-in features Click on this opt-in features. This is what the implementation team initially will do based on the license, fusion license purchased by ABC Corporation. You see, there is something like procurement. This will be enabled, procurement. And if they have got the license for supply portal, supply portal will also be enabled. Once they have the license for sourcing, sourcing will also be enabled. Apart from this, we have a lot of models, supply qualification, procurement. Now, in our example, we don't see ABC Corporation having bought the license for this. That means we will uncheck these two. So this is the first step. The implementation team will be doing. Okay. Next is, we were discussing about configuration. What the implementation team will do? They have to configure but before that the implementation team should also have the roles correct so the to check the roles whether it's implementation user or the real-time business user, they all should have roles to perform we have something called security console 
which will be under tools. Now in this instance, we see that there is a security console under tools. Once we go here, we are talking about users, right? We click on users. We take our same example, okay? HCM.gen, right? That is the HCM.gen. Let me try to put HCM and see whether I'm just getting. See, this is the name. See, this is the display now. I'm just going to click this. You see, this is how it will show. I will try to edit and show how it looks. See, now another important thing is if we see here, this is the first name, last name. What is my login name? Login name is HCM.gen. This is what we use. And for this user, you see, a lot of roles has been provisioned. Now, for an implementation user, will be only doing the setups configuration they will be provided with application implementation consultant i'm just going back to excel okay we talked about purchasing department employee inventory department with different roles now if it is an implementation user implementation users users from implementing company like TCS, Wipro, HCL, etc. will be given some additional roles. This will enable them to configure the system. This role will give access to perform setup. Similarly, there will be another role it security manager see one is employee def employee is required for the people who are getting registered as an employee okay next will be there will be an it security manager this will not be given to all this will be provided to administrator but initially implementation users will be provided this roles so that with this role the implementation can users can themselves can go and add other roles like employee, buyer, procurement preparer, procurement data steward, whatever they want. Okay. So this is a screen where once the user is available in the system, we will go and add the role. Okay. Now if you have to add a role, click on add role. We were discussing about an example, an user who is going to perform requisition creation. So we try to add procurement. You start typing few words, system issue, procurement. We are procurement preparer. The important thing is whatever role we are going to add, all those roles will start with ORA. -E, -E. Now if I give this one, and within that we have a lot of roles for procurement preparer, it says, I'm just going to add procurement P-R-E, P-R-E, so that, see, this is an abstract. Now, if we click like this and add, that means now this user has been given an additional role to create the requisition. Click on then, okay. Now, I've added the role. Now, if we try to add for the second time the same role, procurement preparer system will not show even if i try to see that means this role is already added to the user once we add the role save and close now this is for a user who is going to perform or create requisitions so that the user will be given employee role employee role we had already seen here employee role and then specific role we will take another example a user from a purchasing department whom we call as buyer so buyer is responsible for negotiating with the supplier 
is responsible to create the agreements purchase orders so oracle is giving a seeded role if i try to search with the buyer see add role membership so now for this user hcm jan we are given two new roles this role will give access to the user to work on requisitions and purchase orders now another important thing is whenever we give a role some of the role it takes effect immediately whenever we add a role system will give additional things here okay or we need to run a program for example you see some roles we can see here subscription manager contract management supply chain execution like that you will see procurement you will see procurement role we have added the role but it takes time to reflect so in real time they would have scheduled a program whenever we attach any role that program will run on a scheduled time and then based on the roles assigned the icons will be shown here this is one but why we are not seeing procurement is because this is an hcm user if i again go and check the setup and maintenance and offerings this is an hcm user so i see that this is not enabled that is the reason i go and click on procurement click on opting features can i ask people to go on mute please so you see this is an hcm user hcm human capital management so so it is not enabled. the moment this is enabled we will also see procurement as one of the tab and based on the roles they will have access to other icons within procurement okay so this is how we will go about in fusion there will be users implementation uses there will be business uses created in the system and based on the roles and responsibility there will be segregation of duty next is since this user is not having procurement i'm unable to show we will see in real time whenever we have procurement tab it gives access to suppliers also when we go to suppliers we will be first registering the suppliers in the system like as we had seen whether it is an online supplier of aspect mark will or offline suppliers any supplier will be first registered in the system similarly any item will be registered in the system okay so that and all you will see in the real time session when we go about in the future classes because i need to have a user who is having access to that to show now coming back to this fusion is also giving additional things first we will try to understand the basics now okay this is the home screen the moment we click on log on we get a home screen now based on the offerings enabled we will see the tabs Suppose here I see that fixed assets is enabled. So that's why we see fixed assets tab. This is for financials. Apart from this, something here we see three horizontal bars. This is called as navigator. Whatever you see here, the same thing can be navigated using this navigator. If I go here, I will also see the same thing. If I go, see, for example, contract management. I see what is available, order management, what is available. Okay. Similarly, we will see for procurement also once we enable. So this way also we can go and check. Similarly, if we come down, tools, we see based on the roles given, we will have access to other things like security console. Okay. This will be usually given only to system administrator. But there are multiple ways to navigate in fusion and we have something called programs right we used to see programs we need to submit and run some programs there is a special place called scheduled processes 
where any program which is run by this current user can be viewed okay this is the place where we'll be viewing. apart from this in future sessions we will see about info lets when we go to a specific module suppose i go into a supply chain execution quality management the moment i click quality management system will show a screen like this for our sessions we will be using a different url where we will be configuring our supply chain management modules and procurement modules okay i'm just giving an idea how the look and feel whenever you go into a specific module we have something called info lets it will give an idea for example if assume that this has been a purchase order screen or area it will show how many purchase orders are awaiting approval how many purchase orders are awaiting supply acknowledgement how many purchase orders are cancelled like this okay and we will also discuss about approvals in real time okay and then these are all the modules which we are going to see apart from this we'll be seeing costing okay if i go to ppt let me go to the ppt and this screen so these are the things we will be configuring the system and we will be going through the different modules during that time i will clearly explain what are the roles required for specific modules and how the segregation of duty happens in the system okay thank you so much uh, over to you kumar this is what i plan to cover today yeah thank you sujit suchi many questions in today's session on the overview of the application. Uh, how we will understand what <clears throat> its role needs to be given to a user? There are so many number of roles, right? Uh, that I am going to give a clear explanation. Okay, how we will know, but right now I can just show, just to give a clarity. Okay, there is something called, I told security console, right? We will just go to security console. So that's why it will don't focus anything on this. Whenever we go into specific model, I'm just going to give more clarity. But just because you asked this question. For each module, whatever the rules we have roles. We're going to see when we're talking about the right. model. Now I will just just because you asked, I'm just going to give an idea. We talk about buyer role, right? Now the moment I type buyer, you see. Now, this is going to give an idea, okay. This is going to give an idea what will be done by this buyer. You see, there is a third column. This buyer is having multiple roles. What are okay. the things are possible? Can query an ag agreement? Can work on the change order on a purchase order? Like this, you will see. Can work on the purchase order? Can query and supplier? Okay, so system is giving a specific placeholder called roles, where if you query the role, you will understand. Before that, you can see here also description. This is a rule. Procurement professional responsible for transactional aspects on the procurement processes. Similarly, if I try to put procurement preparer, or I'm just taking another example, catalog administrator. Hmm. system will see why this role is required okay manages agreements catalog content so you need not worry when we go into specific module we hmm. will tell what are the roles required for that user to perform the duties or the transactions and we will come to this and we will clearly see why we are adding that role is it clear okay okay Fine, thank you. Are there any other question. queries? Yeah, Just one please. question. So this is regarding supplier. So uh, we said we have online and offline. So for online, uh, we know the supplier and we register them so that they can log in and uh, they can apply for. But then for uh, offline, like people 
who are new to the organization but they want to have a association with the company so in that case how do they approach and how do we uh, decide that yes we need to register them and then they can have a association so usually how it happens is in this case we were talking about abc corporation as a company right yeah. suppose they want to do business with a new supplier correct first they have to go for negotiation before making this supplier we have some concept called uh, spend authorized okay mm -hmm. before prospective one spend authorized i will just give suppliers are of two types suppliers are of two type supplier creation there is infusion something called prospective supplier or spend authorized supplier and the terminology used is business relationship mm -hmm. now a new supplier is coming they want to do business with abc corp yeah. or it can be another way abc corp is looking for new supplier they want to invite new supplier so in fusion before i talk about offline and online i told supplier has to be created in fusion so initially abc corp will create a new supplier assume that a new supplier is okay dig digman is a new supplier now when abc corp is creating this supplier abc corp means abc corp user who is responsible for supplier creation will create this supplier digman as prospective supplier when we create prospective supplier this supplier can be involved only in 